my name is Mariano, for those that were not yesterday. Um, I will be talking about uh, some tools to help uh, admins of applications. Uh, I won't be talking again about myself, <laughs> don't want to lose time on that. Uh, you can read it on the slides. Um, <clears throat> So again, as yesterday, on most of the what I will show on the demos are based on an application I am building for a client, which is a financial application. Um, so most of the examples will be on that uh, application. Uh, it's important that you understand Q is developed with Faro, uh, deploy on Champstone. Uh, we make uh, the classical uh, server-side rendering with C-side. <clears throat> the output of this talk won't be you know, like a full open source project that I release, uh, but mostly uh, a problem that we have and some ideas uh, that you may be able to reuse uh, on some of your projects. And sure, uh, maybe some of the tools that I show uh, you could uh, use them as, as they are. Uh, we have no problem on sharing. Uh, in fact, we already share some, so we don't have problem with that. So in Q, we identify three types of different, but at the same time related roles. Uh, one is the classical uh, sysadmin. You know, it's cloning virtual machines, installing IP tables, configuring SSH, all the classical sysadmin tasks. And then a lot of Chamston admin. Um, then we have the classical uh, application administrator, which is usually either an advanced user or um, a technical support from our side, which does operations to maintain uh, the status of the application, like uh, making a backup or l remote logging off users or checking some stats, etc. And then we have advanced developers, which uh, sometimes, for example, they want to debug an error that happened on the server that cannot be reproduced locally, so we need to debug on the server, or sometimes we need to do hot fixes in production, or things like that. <coughs> so what do they have all in common? Well, in our, in this, in this product, the, what we found out is that we always needed to be fast when we needed to attend one of these problems. And we found out that it's, it takes time uh, to have all your setup uh, to be able to go into the server uh, to do something. You know, to, to have SSH, configure, and, and it's really hard. Um, if you multiply that by a number of servers, it gets even uh, more and more costly because, for example, our application can be you know, installed on different servers, so maybe it's not just one server, but you have 20, 50 different, uh, hopefully. But I mean, the idea that you could have multiple installations, so it gets uh, more complicated. <clears throat> so when we ask how can we minimize our admin effort, uh, what we found in, that work for us is to put the most used tools on the web. And not only on the web, but also within the same uh, application. So, <clears throat> yeah, maybe I, I am going ahead with the conclusion, but the conclusion is that it's each time I'm going with SSH to do something on the server, I think if I can do that easily from the web uh, to avoid further... Uh, access via SSH, etc. So that's uh, what I will show. <coughs> A little disclaimer, uh, admin tools looks ugly because of course we don't have time to make it pretty. So yeah. Uh, some of the things I will show uh, are not uh, completely mine. Some yeah, but some no, I just improve. Uh, so I don't want to take credit of all of it. And the other one is that don't worry that all of what I'm going to show is protected by user roles. So it's not that everybody will be able to do what I will show you. Um, okay, so I will start with the, with the demo. 
and it will be demo up until the end. Um, <clears throat> I just I had to choose what to show. Uh, there were many things that I would like to talk about on this topic, so maybe I will present something next year. But at least I will show you some things. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I will move. Not this one. This one. Uh, I need to resize when it. Okay. okay. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So <clears throat> this is uh. What I will show, or uh, likely the last two points, maybe I don't will make it on time. So let's start with inspecting objects. Uh, so this is, oh, it looks ugly <laughs> with this size. Uh, uh, wait. Uh, I have an issue with um, it's it's too little for you, know the font. Yeah. Okay, I will try to zoom. Uh, yeah. Whoa. Uh, I will put it back as it was before because you won't see anything. Uh, Okay, so what the first thing I wanted to show you is that we have plenty of crude everywhere. We have uh, all of these menu items are all crude, uh, all of these, all, all, all of these. Um, so the first thing that, that we do is that um, in our crude, um, what we have is a way to inspect objects. Uh, so this is very uh, used by developers. So I can uh, click here and inspect, and I get uh, a full inspector from which I can uh, navigate uh, either from here or, or well, this is an empty collection, so it's not very funny. Um, and maybe see charts decoration, for example. Uh, you you can uh, if it's. Um, a primitive object you see directly, else you can uh, start uh, navigating the graph of objects and you can go back. Uh, then, for example, we have this uh, specter. I can do self, uh, I don't know, whatever, class, print string. I mean, this is a, a way to evaluate and see the results. Uh, I can either inspect or do it. Um, so that's uh, an inspector. Uh, we use this in a lot of places, not only on, on crude, but also in many other uh, places where we find that inspecting uh, an option is useful. Uh, we have also uh, view OOP, for example. This is a very simple thing, but this gives us the ob uh, gemstone has the object, I mean, unique IDs for objects. So if we get this ID, uh, we can always retrieve back the object. So I can go, for example, here I have um, uh, a toad. It's a gemstone client from which you can uh, browse classes, uh, evaluate code. And if I do object, object for OOP, and I, I'm sure it will be, of course, appearing below. Okay. Uh, sorry. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, so that's it's a way for us to again retrieve the object. So then then we get our full development environment with a handle on our object. So we can continue further our analysis. Again, the OOP is printed anywhere, not only on the screw, but we have the ability to display that anywhere where we think it will be useful. So okay, enough about that. Uh, the second point I wanted to show is small talk scripting and prototyping. So what we did, oh, it's not this one. Um, it's, we have a, a tool that we call a script tool, um, which basically allow us to have uh, scripts which we can save. Uh, and basically it's a, a piece of, of code, of block, that we can execute to do something, whatever you want to evaluate on the server. Uh, here I can say uh, this foo and I run it. I mean, it's like an evaluator. Uh, here it's where the results are printed. You can customize how to render the results of, of the code that you execute. And we can also input certain arguments that we can choose. For example, our application always have a context, what we have an application context, uh, which has, uh, for example, some cache for the user during the session or some preferences, etc. So you always need an application context uh, on a certain code. So we can pass that as an argument. So then, for example, I can, for example, open company report. I can just write this code. And this will create a company report for Apple. Uh, it will just add it onto my workspace, so I can run that, that and that will um, open, again, a, a company report on Apple. So in a similar way, uh, we can also, um, for example, prototype, say, I want to quickly try something without having to deploy, and sometimes Jamson is different, so we would like to try something. So here I'm saying, OK, pluggable dialog, rendering block is this. And I can you know, type whatever rendering I want. Uh, and I print it. Sometimes this is useful when, uh, when we're uh, mostly about uh, prototyping uh, with data. Sometimes the data is on the server because there are tube databases and we don't have the data locally. So sometimes it's, it's handy. And then, um, well, for example, we, we do this for migrations. You know, Gemstone uh, allows uh, objects migration that you would need to do when you change the shape of a class. So for example, uh, this is a dummy ex example. But for example, here is how I would take all instances of uh, a given domain class and I would iterate each of them, I would say, OK, new instance variable, put this value, or take the old value and put this one. Uh, so normally, this is uh, one way to, we use to run migrations. And of course, you can create new scripts. I can put a name, uh, whatever. Uh, this gets saved uh, automatically. So whenever you run this, uh, it gets sent, it, it gets saved. So okay, here I have a does not understand, obviously. Um, and then I can export this. If I export this to disk, then uh, if you if you check if I check my Dropbox folder, I will have all the scripts exported to dot st. Uh, anyway, uh, that's about uh, scripting, which we use uh, we use it quite frequently. Now, uh, I wanted to talk about profiling. It, I think this is really important for us because uh, we profile a lot. So we need to be fast. And we compute a lot of data. The reports we present sometimes are really heavy. So we use profiling a lot. And here, something, um, something I found out is that it's very handy to profile within CSI. Why? Because Let's say I want to 
profile a report. So I come here and say, OK, Apple, and I would like to test this report, to profile this report. If I want to do this from, from a workspace, let's say from workspace, I need the context here. I would need to create a, 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 a report object, set API, set all of this. Here I have plenty of side things that I can. So I would, it would take me a lot of time to be able to reproduce what the callback of this button does. Um, that's one thing. And the second thing is that many times I want to profile the rendering of CSI. So I want to see uh, sometimes the bottleneck is on CSI rendering. It's the time CSI takes to write the HTML. And for that, the only way I have is to hook on, on CSI rendering to profile that. So uh, what I did, which I think is it's pretty uh, useful, is to make a session, to become a session profil profilable, ah, whatever. <laughs> uh, I mean, basically what they would do is that every single click or every single callback, it will be profiled. So here from the admin tools, uh, I can go to system profiler. You can see it's, it's not turning on. Um, I will. Uh, Enable this, and if you allow me, uh, you don't see the Dropbox icon anyway. Uh, okay, but what would happen now? Let me quickly uh, go to uh, Dropbox. Back. Uh, profiling. Yeah, I will empty all of this. OK, so now let's say I will click uh, on a company report. That was an Ajax request. And I should have get the profiling. OK, here I, I, I get the output. I will show in a second what is the output. But what I want to show you is that each click I do, for example, here I click again, even if I have an error, here I have uh, the results. So I am hooking on every CSI callback and make it profile. Now, to explain what is the result of that, I need to explain something quickly. I want to profile something. I don't know how, will, how much it will take. It, it could be 200 milliseconds, or it could be four minutes. I have the profile thing that takes four minutes. And for making serious profiling, you need to have an accurate number of samples. If the output is based on 100 samples, that is crap. So to make serious profiling, you need, let's say, 100,000 samples uh, of what you profile. Wow, 50, 50,000, OK? <laughs> OK, 50,000, let's say 50,000. So Jameson provides specifying the sample frequency, uh, but you cannot know in advance how much you will take. So what they did is very basic. Um, is if you check what the sorry uh, the problem is that I cannot see here. I have the tabs here. The tab here are hidden because this came to a second row, and so I cannot navigate easily the tabs. That's why it looks ugly. Uh, sorry about that. Um, but if you see now the output, what I want to show you is that it shows, uh, this one takes two milliseconds. Wow. OK, uh, now I will run the, the real example. So I will get a report in April, and I will run a demo uh, oh, balance sheet. OK, now I will remove them all so that it, I easily identify which is the last one. OK, I run. And now this. Sorry. Now it, it, it's tell, telling me that it took 50 milliseconds to run that. And what it says is that if this is an heuristic thingy, but for 50,000 points, I would need a sampling frequency of 
of this number of, uh, I think it was a nanosecond, if I recall. Uh, so let's say now I want, if I am debugging something that takes four minutes, then the number, the sampling frequency here will be different. So once I get uh, a nice uh, frequency, what I do is that, I, sorry, I go to my profile tool and I say, uh, okay, now stop this time to run kind of profiling and do real CPU profiling. The rest of the things I let it, I won't have time to talk about this, but Chemstone supports tiling on other things than CPU usage. It allows tiling you on object faults, page faults, Eden usage, CCA time, so it's really awesome from that point of view. So I will run CPU. So here I can specify the frequency which I will use uh, what I just uh, did, and I will enable profile. So if I go back to my report, I will remove all of them. And now when I click get report, I will get uh, uh, a nice profile output with a nice number of samples. So that's pretty much about uh, profiling. Uh, it will take a few seconds because uh, with that number of points, it takes a while. Uh, but I need to move on. So I will show you the results in a couple of minutes. OK, about error handling, uh, I will introduce uh, an error. Uh, maybe I will log. So. Um, the error handler for CSI, uh, when it's normal request, it's okay. It works, uh, it's no big deal. Uh, but when you have ASHACs, they don't provide a, a nice way, a nice way to, to correctly manage ASHACs error. So I will show you something I did. Um, I will introduce an error here on the about page. I will just put a foo uh, on the rendering method. I will run this. And now if, if I go to about, this will break. Uh, you see this nice model with all this um, description of the error. Uh, well, I show the error description, uh, the error ID, what time, who created, uh, some versions of our packages. Um, the chim, the chim PID, and some other useful information. <coughs> and of course, what I did on, on the back is that I created a continuation on Chemstone so that I can have the whole stack for later uh, analysis. And so this took me a while. So uh, I think it's worth quickly uh, showing you uh, how I did this. Um, oh, no, I can't, well, it's hard to to show on this. Uh, basically, I have a, a subclass from our wallback uh, error handler, and I need to uh, override uh, the method uh, from the Chemson provided uh, error handler. Uh, I think it's going to be complicated. But there is one way where I check if here, if the request is Ajax, I create the continuation, and then I make this response uh, from Ajax. And this method, what it does, it does an, a JSON response where I set for each of these important data that I need to present I put the value, and I answer that, you see at the end, I, I put that as a JSON on the response, and I make the answer to be error, so from the client point of view, it will be an error, but it will be a, a JSON response with all this data. So then, the other part of the trick is that when I render the whole application, there is one place where I render the model. 
uh, and which I render each of these, uh, each field uh, has a special uh, CSS class. And this is rendered at the beginning, but it's hidden. Uh, it's not hidden. The model has not yet been open. So that is rendered from the beginning. And the last part of the trick is that I have an, an, an Ajax error handler, which um, if you see, uh, it's too complicated to, to show. Uh, this is uh, provided by JavaScript itself. Uh, it's, you can hook on Ajax errors. And that you can plug a JavaScript. And that JavaScript is this one that you are seeing here. So this JavaScript happens uh, whenever there's a Nashax error. So here, what I do uh, is basically parse the response. I take a look for each of those spans, for each of the fields. And I set the correct HTML, which I get uh, from the JSON that I just parse. Uh, I think it's not clear at all. Uh, it's a little bit complicated. Uh, but that's the way I found. Uh, I think it's difficult to explain, and uh, the, rest, the screen doesn't help me. OK. Uh, something very nice about this is that, as you can see, I have an, uh, a number for the error. Um, uh, something I can do is I can web debug this so when the when the user share with us that screenshot, then we have we are all set. We need we have everything we need. So I can go to for example here. Uh, I can go to admin uh, and I can say error manager and I can paste the ID, click the bug. And I have a, a nice, well, a, 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 a nice enough debugger. It's not a debugger. It's actually a stack analyzer, if you want. And so we can see the stack that created that, uh, that error. And we can uh, see each of the variables. We can debug and inspect. So this, this bug icons did open an inspector on that instance variable. So I can either inspect instance variable, can inspect the stack, as well as I can uh, view the source code uh, of uh, the method in question. For example, let's see uh, the render content. Here it is. So you see, basically, well, <coughs> so yeah, the uh, thing is that 90% 90, 90 of the time, we are able to, to profile from, from the web. And if that's not enough, what we can do is that we, we can go to Toad, and we get the continuation from there. And I can, here I can debug, and I get uh, the full real debugger back in my gemstone uh, image. So here I have the real. Uh, debugger with step, etc. If if the web was not enough, okay, I'm running out of time. So, uh, the profiling, yeah. I just have one more to show, and I am done. So this is the output. It's nothing fancy. Is the 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 real uh, output, but what is important is that the number of samples is accurate. And, well, of course, you cannot see anything on uh, the screen. But this is a nice way to, to profile. I just click a button, check my Dropbox, open, and uh, that's done. OK, I need two minutes more. Uh, I will quickly show the last part, which is the Chemstone Admin Console. And this is. Um, and a web tool that provides some information about Champstone. So for example, here I can see uh, the current repository stats, uh, the size of it, how much I have left. I can see all the backups that has been made, uh, when, which size. I can perform some operations over the backups. 
I can see all the gemstone logs, so I can even trigger and watch the logs right from here uh, without needing to, again, SSH, go to the logs folder and see what the hell was going on. Um, so I can watch the logs, I can, uh, let me scroll a little bit faster, I can see the stone configuration where I can see all the settings from this stone. Um, I can see the gem stone settings. If I scroll a little bit, I can see now the gem that is running this request. I can see stone version report to see which gemstone version it is, the build number. Sometimes it is useful when you need to give gemstone some information. Here, this is very nice. I can show all active sessions to my stone. So I can see the PID, I can see, uh, for example, uh, the name, I mean, what they are. This is GC Reclaim, which is a mean symbol gem, CISA maintenance, CISA gems, CISA gem. This is Toad, this is the Toad image. I have open. Uh, then I can list instances uh, of, of this current gem, etc. And then finally, I have some buttons on the top. Uh, instances listing, so which I can list how many, I mean, the classes that have most of the instances. Um, I can do object audit, uh, I can object audit and repair, audit and clean broken indexes, and so on, so on. Now, the thing is, each time I need to do something, I try to add a button here, and most of these things run on a background job. Uh, for example, instance listings that fires a background job. It's not run on the CSI gem that is listening for requests, but it runs on a framework that we have for running background jobs. Uh, and then here uh, we have a, a really nice set of tools for these uh, background jobs from which we can do a uh, lot of stuff like terminated, uh, start. Okay, that's uh, all. I know you have questions quickly, else outside. Thank you.